when we think about graphs of functions, we're probably thinking about something that looks like this. This is what's called a continuous function. The reason it's called a continuous function is that we can trace as much of the graph as we want to without ever needing to lift our pencil or stop our motion. When we think about the graphs of functions, we usually think about continuous functions because when we graph a physical quantity like the height of the ball that's thrown in the air and we graph height over time, that is a continuous function. Physical processes are usually continuous with respect to time. However, there's only one rule for something to be the graph of a function. It's called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says if I draw, if I pick any x value in the domain and I draw a vertical line at that x value, I can only hit the graph at most once. It's important that I'm saying here at most once. It's possible that I could have something where there aren't, there are some x values for which there is no y value. And so if I put a vertical line at this x value, it hits zero times. But that's still totally okay. The vertical line doesn't have to cross that curve at that point. It just can't cross it more than once. So a graph that looks like this is not the graph of a function. I mean, it's a valid graph. There may be times where you want to graph something like this, but it is not the graph of a function. This is often a little bit jarring for people, and I understand why. For instance, this function, which is given by this graph of y equals g of x, if I draw a line at x equals negative 1, I don't see anything. So g of negative 1 is undefined because there's no graph at x equals negative 1. If I look at x equals 0, I see that g of 0 is equal to 0. If I look at x equals 1, I see that g of 1 is equal to 1. And if I look at x equals 2, I see that g of 2 is equal to 2. I don't have a formula for this. So I don't know for sure what the values of other things are, but I can still estimate like g of 2.5 is equal to approximately 0 0.4, it looks like. And that's really all I can say. And that's all I may need to say here. The important thing is, even though I don't know a formula for this, and even though I don't have a nice continuous function, because when I try to trace this, I do have to lift my pencil to make this transition, it's still a function. This is definitely the graph of a function. I don't have to have a formula for the function. I can just read it directly from the graph. So you look closely here and you'll notice that there's this open circle, closed circle thing. This graph has an open circle and a closed circle at x equals 1.5. Let's talk about why that is. When we see a prominent open circle somewhere on the graph of a function, it's used to indicate that the function value is not what the rest of the graph might indicate. So what we're trying to do here is draw attention to something that you really need to be careful about. Even though from this picture, it might look like f of 1 is equal to 2, that doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is this open circle is telling us that there's an anomaly on the graph. f of 1 is not 2, even though the rest of the graph might indicate that. we see a closed circle on a graph, it's going to be with an open circle. So this closed circle is actually telling me in this graph the value of f of 1. I see this open circle, and what that tells me is f of 1 is not 2, even though the rest of the graph might look like it. Big warning. 
So I need to look elsewhere on my x equals 1. And I see there is a closed circle at negative 3. So f of 1 equals negative 3. This open circle, closed circle, the open circle is a warning saying don't look here. You look for a closed circle, and the closed circle actually gives you the function value. If you do not see a closed circle, like on this graph, I don't see a closed circle anywhere, then the function is undefined at that value. Just to repeat, because this idea is super important, look at our alien friend here and what he says. If you see both an open circle and a closed circle at the same x value, the f of x value is the y coordinate of the closed circle. So we can look at this graph and say, what is h of negative 2? At x equals negative 2, there's an open circle and a closed circle. We look at the closed circle, and the closed circle is at y equals negative 1. So I have this point negative 2, negative 1. h of negative 2 is negative 1. I can look here at x equals 2. There's an open circle and a closed circle. At x equals 2, the closed circle is at the point 2, 3. So there's a, the h of 2 value is equal to 3. Finally, at h of 3, there's an open circle and a closed circle. I always look to the closed circle for the function value. The closed circle is at negative 2, 3. I'm sorry, I wrote that backwards. Closed circle is at 3, negative 2. So h of 3 is equal to negative 2.